Hi guys and welcome back. With the release of Vega 64 and 56, I've been watching and reading a lot of media content over the past few days to give you my honest opinion on the consumer version of Vega and ultimately whether I would buy it or not. This video is going to be a literature review of sorts as I'm not likely to get a review sample of the card anytime soon from AMD. So let's start by looking at the technical specs of the three main cards that AMD are dropping just now. That being the RX 64 Liquid, the RX 64 Air, and the RX 56 Air. They're all named based on the number of compute units on board each card. All three of the cards are based on Global Foundry's 14 nanometer process. They are all based on Vega GCN5 architecture, and they all have 8 gigabytes of HBM2 memory, the inclusion of which no doubt contributed to the product launch dates being pushed back this year. That is where the similarities in the product stop and the differences between the products start to creep in, such as varying clock rates, texture units, and most importantly, the cost of the product. So now we have that out of the way, let's talk about gaming performance and, whether the car and where the cards sit, in my opinion, on reviewing hours of media content since the embargo lifted earlier this week. So before I start giving my opinion, I would urge you to watch the video and check out some of the content from contributors I'm about to mention before commenting guys. Remember, I don't have and I'm not likely to get test samples of these products. With that being said, I looked at the content from all the big hitters such as Anantech, Tom's Hardware, Linus Tech Tips, Paul's Hardware, Jay's Two Cents and Adored TV to name but a few before I came to any sort of conclusion. Right, so where does Vega sit in gaming performance then? Well. Looking at the price point and the performance numbers from various outlets, I think it's safe to say that the Vega 56, whether air or liquid cooled, is clearly aimed at taking on the GTX 1080. And I think the liquid cooled version does this much better than the air cooled variant due to the higher factory clocks and better cooling solution employed. Looking at the Vega 56, it's clearly taking on the GTX 1070, a card I'm very familiar with as I own two of them myself. Okay then, how do they perform? Well, based on the numbers that are being reported, I have to say that rather boringly, the Vega 64 is able to trade blows with the 1080, with neither card coming out as a clear winner. Looking at the Vega 56, it seems more like a 1070 Ti, in my opinion, not totally destroying the 1070, but being consistently ahead of it. Now don't get me wrong, I might sound a bit negative, and I'm not, it's just... It's just all a bit pedestrian. At least now AMD are in the conversation when it comes to high-end GPU products. So switching to productivity, I think Vega really shines. With gaming it was neck and neck with Nvidia, but here, looking at the numbers being reported by the media, Vega in any flavour seems to be consistently beating out the Nvidia cards in ta tasks such as Blender, After Effects and video rendering. This didn't surprise me, as I noticed during the synthetics testing that the media had been reporting for Vega, it was again consistently ahead of its NVIDIA competition in suites such as 3D Mark. For me, this is way more important, as now you have a series of GPUs that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the mainstream high-end NVIDIA cards, but outstrips them in productivity convincingly. That being said, there are some scary power consumption numbers out there, showing Vega to be a bit of a power hog. Although, Adored TV was able to offset this by using the balanced and the power saving profile instead of the extreme power profile for a loss of around 5 to 10 frames per second in Prey. But this cut the power draw by up to 200 watts. I urge you all to check out Jim's video, it made for interesting viewing. So we've talked about the spec, the price and the performance and now I have to ask a couple of questions. 1. Did Vega live up to the hype? And two, is Vega worth investing in? So in my opinion, no, Vega didn't live up to its hype. And how could it in reality? This thing has been making the rounds on the internet for over a year, in which time Nvidia released its Pascal lineup. And that's my main worry. All these numbers are compared to an architecture that is over a year old. Nvidia are either going to refresh the Pascal lineup and probably gain an extra 10% performance just through process improvements at their fab plants, or they'll just go ahead and drop a whole new architecture early next year. In either case, 
it will be enough to overtake Vega currently. However, that being said, at least AMD are back in the mainstream high-end GPU market with products that are compelling for other reasons. So that being said, is Vega worth investing in? Well, that depends on a number of things, not least what cryptocurrency mining will do to the price of the GPU. I also think that the MSRP is a bit too high for Vega across the board. Across the board. It hasn't been a game changer and it has been compared to 12 month old competition effectively. That being said, if you were looking at a new GPU, an adaptive refresh rate monitor, then it becomes a very attractive proposition with three sync panels retailing for hundreds of dollars less than their G-Sync alternatives. And AMD knows this, and that's why they're offering a number of bundled purchases with cards and various other bits of hardware in an attempt to offer more value to the consumer, but also to stop miners from pushing the price of the cards through the roof. Well guys, that's it for me and Vega. As I said, I'm a tiny bit underwhelmed, but it would have been hard for any product to live up to the hype that Vega has had. But, if truth be told, it's a solid product, if a bit too expensive and power hungry. AMD are back on the right path, and Nvidia have a true competitor again. As I said, for me, a card and a panel offer the greatest value, but for the average consumer, Vega would make a solid GPU choice. Thanks for watching, and see you later in another video, guys. Bye.